It's called uh, I Am Katrina. And how, so how has porn evolved from when you first started to the way it is now, from oh, your view? Porn has uh, been constantly evolving because when we first started doing porn movies, the big deal was whether or not the guy could get his dick hard. And mm-hmm. then, you know, the girl um, was like a, you know, it, it, the point of a sex scene and the guy's it has evolved to the guys yeah. really being compliments to show the girls off because guys tend to uh, work until they're older and, and they're in a lot of movies. But, but when we first started doing movies, just to have the sex act happen, we didn't have Viagra, we didn't have Cialis, you know, mm-hmm. all sorts of things. So there were some guys that could do it and some that couldn't. And I was like one of those maybe guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I did still pictures pretty good, but you know, in front of the camera, I wasn't that great in front of a movie camera. So, but there were other guys that would. And in fact, I had a producer in 1990 tell me, you know, I hate shooting porn because the star of the scene is always the male erection because we're all worried about it. That has gone away. And whether or not it's gone away because of Viagra and supplements or stuff, I'm not sure. Yeah. But the real emphasis now has been since the days of Rocco's and Freddie first getting in the business, really, it's been about the man being skilled and, and, and good at sex instead of just being able to get a heart on it was more about what are you doing with that thing you know do you yeah. know how to work with it and stuff and that's really what uh, it's evolved to today although I don't want to say that's for sure what sells all the time mm-hmm. it, it, it's a necessary part of it because there are a lot of elements to what sells today but porn has evolved to much much better sex than it used to be that's interesting that you say that. You know, that before, like you said, it was uh, focused more on, you know, the guy being hard versus now where it's like, you know, are they good at what they're doing, pleasing the woman? How does the, how, how does like, n- not exactly like the companies, but how do people choose, you know, what exactly is going to sell? Like what type of sex is going to sell next? Well... Today, with the internet, you can tell people click on one picture more than another. Yeah. Or one idea more than another idea. So there's a lot of data out there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a lot of my competitors are out of business. My competitors from 10 years ago, are a lot of them are gone because the internet has delivered a lot of free stuff mm-hmm. one way or another. And uh, a lot of people can't make it. My... I make a lot less money than I used to make, and my directors at my company make a lot less money than they used to make because it's just more competitive, and people are seeking, I don't know, quality, different, you know, the uniqueness yeah. and the and the greatness of gonzo sex, which mm-hmm. is what I kind of shot, which was not prevalent at all in the 80s which was really a like a breath of fresh air in the 90s when can I you let shooting. people know what gonzo is for those that don't know well that first adventures of buttman movie i'm in the movie as the cameraman and you know that i have a camera so i'm like you know get hired by mm-hmm. people to shoot their party their birthday party and i come and i'm like talking to myself in front of the camera and jerking off to what i shot the night before and say oh i got this job i go there and and i you know, I'm talking from behind the camera. Yeah. And I'm putting the camera on the floor and I'm sneaking butt shots and I get in trouble because I'm sneaking a butt shot. And then some girl likes me kind of, which was Tracy Adams and all sorts of crazy stuff happened. But the point of Gonzo is that there, you recognize that there's a camera there and the girls can look right into the camera and be sexy. And looking right into the camera and be sexy is mm-hmm. on a whole nother level from just relating to, to another person. It's much more powerful. It's easier to shoot. You don't have to act as well Mm -hmm. because in the 80s, all we shot were imitation movies and TV shows, and the acting was usually bad, and people were hired because they were good at sex. Now you could see a girl being sexy right to the camera, and that was that was that's all of it. That's just like so much better. That's better than before. Than 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 a than a a narrative story where the girl is doing lines and doing. Or talking to a guy and then they relate together and then she can be really hot and really turn the guy on and you get to see a lot of sex but it kind of goes to another level when the girl is looking right into the camera in fact one of my best-selling uh, directors mike adriano at evil mm-hmm. angel has what they call pov plus he it looks like pov the girl's looking always right into the camera even when 
he comes around behind the cameraman and puts yeah. his dick in the girl's mouth, she's still looking into the camera and connecting with the audience. That connection is really valuable. Now, you know, a lot of what I've noticed, too, also that a lot of companies, what they do is, um, like more of the bigger companies, they don't shoot like they used to. I, you know, what they do, it's like they'll buy, you know, movies. I don't know if I'm saying this correct, you know, where they'll just uh, buy or, you know, movies so they can distribute them. I don't know if I'm well, saying this right. Well, I know right. Vivid and um, Hustler buy movies for their broadcast companies mm-hmm. so they can distribute them that way. Because they don't shoot anymore. Now, what is, yeah. What's the point of that? Is it because, like you said, there's not as much money anymore? I, I believe that that's why both of those companies stopped shooting because the profit margins were far less. Yeah. And they're just hanging on. I don't want to say, I mean, I don't know what what is new and innovative that's happening at those companies. Maybe there is something. But for you, I, I like... I know it's... it's not competing greatly but for you like how what do you do you still does evil angel still make movies do they still shoot and you well, distribute them okay evil angel never made movies other than my movies okay i had a special deal with rocco zafredi joey silvera the other directors that i took on john leslie where they owned their own movies and i simply sold them i did not tell them what to shoot mm-hmm. but when i picked the director whose movies i wanted to sell at evil angel i knew what kind of directors they were and what they were good at. And that's what I um, wanted to sell. And that yeah. sold well. But they financed and shot their own movies. To this day, that's what most of Evil Angel is. Like Johnny Darko, who does a really beautiful picture and really sexy movies, he picks what he shoots. We give him data now, mm-hmm. more data than ever before, on what sells and what doesn't sell, on what sells especially on EvilAngel.com, like who was good, who was not, whatever. And, but I never had to make those decisions. Yeah. I never wanted to make those decisions. And because I wasn't making those decisions, I was able to bring on a lot more directors, like 15, 16, 17. We sell almost right now. Maybe it's 14 now, I don't know. But I couldn't run the company and be telling people what to shoot, saying, all right, I'm going to spend... $15,000 on this movie, 20 on this movie, and mm-hmm. you're going to do this kind of theme and that kind of theme and whatever. If I had to be involved with that, Evil Angel never would have happened because that was not my goal. My goal was always to make my movies and to have the time to do it. So Evil Angel grew as a as a bottom-up company with the ideas of good directors I knew, and what I sold them was their trust in me that I would actually collect the money and then pay them everything that was owed them. That's what I was selling them. So we built this reputation at Evil Angel. If you're just not tuning in, you're listening to the show on Dash Radio Discover, and I'm here with John Stagliano, who is the man uh, of Evil Angel. How do you decide what to put out and what's going to be good you know, for the uh, people to well, purchase? I used to think I was really brilliant and was like great at coming up with good ideas. So I'll talk about some of my successes in the past. Like <laughs> Dream Girls was this amateur company that did public nudity and like girls flashing and stuff in 1998, 99. I took yeah. them on. Nobody thought it was an amateur line. Nobody thought it would sell in stores, but it was a big success. A lot of people liked it. Competed directly with hardcore movies, even though they weren't hardcore. And then people like Jason, who did really beautiful anal stuff, like, you know, with, with better photography so mm-hmm. to speak and really demanding but really simple ideas and that sold because that immediately worked for me and my criteria was always what is it that I like and works for me mm-hmm. so it used to be like really good nasty sex worked for me a lot and that kind of graduated to I want to see more ass and particular things like what I like and I believe that was my downfall and that I should have been focused on. I don't know. But <laughs> but we, uh, my my sales uh, guy, <laughs> this guy, Adam, who uh, he, he, he went over all my hits and misses since like uh, 2009, you know, yeah. and I had one good director from 2009 that stayed with the company, two that didn't, and he considers those failures, and then he went the list of the failures and said, John, you're not making the right decisions. And I said, wait a second, I don't know. I think I made some pretty good decisions. I mostly go with just what turns me on, and 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 that has is intuition. Yeah. And it, and in today's market, 
has been superseded pretty much by clicks. Like, you know, you get more insight into what's going to sell by clicks. Mm -hmm. Because the profit margins have gone down, it's uh, more crucial that we understand that, no, John, you can't sell another face-sitting director because you like face-sitting so much it doesn't matter that it got shot down about five years ago and I realized it's just never going to happen again. It was no fun because I like those kind of movies. But anyway. What is the fascination with, you know, butts? What is it? like? Because I know even now... Um, just looking at like videos, you know, videos and even, you know, like a lot of the women, you know, they have, you know, they either have implants, they have, you know, just they want bigger well, butts. I belong to a YouTube channel, which is which shows you exercises on how to make your butt bigger. That muscle can be developed very nicely. So Not as big really, as Nicki Minaj, though. No, maybe not. That or big. Kim Kardashian, okay, because those are like Jesus. implants. Yes. <laughs> Those are spectacular <laughs> butts, which are very eye-catching and stuff, but I don't necessarily have Which to are that. enhanced. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the enhanced. I hate to say it, and I don't like enhanced anything. But what is the it. fascination, though, of, like, I... I, I well, what is the fascination? It's just your brain. It's like you look at it and it goes, bonk, and you know, Here, let me, let me st- on or something. I don't know. It's not conscious. See, that's what I'm saying. It like, I want to I would, I would step are. into inside a, a man's brain and find out, like, what is the fascination about that? All Maybe I don't see it because is, I don't. It's not mine. <laughs> it, we see a girl walking down the street, yeah. boom, bada, boom, bada, or something like that, and it just does something to you. It makes your dick hard, or you get, you get chubby down there, or something. I don't know, and that's all it is. Does size matter for men? You know, when it comes to like you know a, a female's butt, does does uh, size matter? Okay, okay. there is like the few, bigger the better. Butts. I've been examining this very question on Chatterbait <laughs> every morning. Instead of working. Um, the the thing that uh, I have concluded is that really, really pretty butts sell almost as good as bigger butts. But there's something about size that, um, and then roundness of the cheeks and firmness and yeah. health and whatever. Those characteristics are all important. But a girl with a slender butt does, is pretty good too i mean it's got to like stick out and whatever ah, there's all the aspects it's like fucking it's like if it's sticking out at you and you're know, ready for sex from behind that's so do you better and it doesn't have to be huge it just has to be sexy the way it's presented <clears throat> so size doesn't really matter oh it matters it helps but it's not everything and and being sexy Girls can have kind of skinny butts and still be really sexy because they stick it out good or whatever it looks like. You know, it just works in my brain. I don't know. Yeah. Why? All I, that's my standard, though. Whatever works. I'm always trying to figure out, oh, did that make my dick harder? No. Did that make the dick harder? Something okay, how, like that. How old are you? Old enough, baby. I'm okay, so 65. You're 65? Year, okay, so are you, do you have to use anything to help you? My right hand, for sure. <laughs> I don't know what else I would use. No, you, you, I, you, I don't have to, but it you, helps. You're but, not, you know, say Alice works, whatever. Fuck, but I can, yeah, like, are, do you have to um, use, like, any enhancements to help you, or you still are okay? I am, I am not, other than sometimes with my wife, I don't regularly have sex but with my wife sometimes. But I'm not great anymore. At it. I was for a while there I, in my 60s. I don't know. We a long story I'm not going to go into right now. Yeah. But um but it's not as good as it used to be. Man, I wish I was in my 20s again. That was when you say like good, does that mean like it's not as hard as it used to be or like when you say is good? Hard is one thing. It's not as it, it, it's <laughs> like yeah, it doesn't get hard as easily and then it doesn't unless you get I need training. I need the right person with me to train it all the time and then my penis becomes better. It's, it's you, like exercise or something. But so then you don't use any enhancements then to like assist you, you know, like well, Viagra yeah, or yeah, I'll see Alice sometimes. Viagra I don't like anymore. Just, What's the difference between the Viagra? I don't know. Or Viagra gives me a headache and it like acts faster and supposedly works, but now it doesn't. It's not unpleasant. I find it. So see Alice, Cialis just kind of works. Works better over a longer period of time. And just as good. So it's true what they say. Then you know, it's like the older you get, you know, your body you know, doesn't work as like when you're younger. So Uh you...